Hey everybody, Lee Speed here. I'm back after like a month again. You probably should have seen that one coming. Actually, there might be people who just subscribed who didn't, but that's how it seems to go lately. But yeah, I mean, as far as like Christmas and birthday, not much to say. I mean, I've been like out and about a lot. I mean, for my birthday, I've gone to like diff like so many different spots. It's crazy. In fact, um, after those, I was just like, I don't feel like leaving the house again. This is just like, man, going out to different like restaurants or, you know, different friends' houses and stuff like that. I'm just like, wow, just give me a break. But yeah, it's, it's pretty insane sometimes. But as far as like Christmas, you know, like how was your guys' this Christmas? Like, did you get anything awesome? Leave a comment below, I guess, if you got something particularly amazing. For me, I just, mainly the stuff I got was on my birthday because, you know, I was mainly wanting to get them on my birthday because... I don't know about the crisps. It's like, there's like a couple of things I got, but it's like, you know, nothing like too groundbreaking. I mean, I'm not really looking for all that much that, you know, that I either am needing right away or whatever. I mean, I got, I needed a new digital, vo digital voice recorder and new DVD player, but you know, it's just stuff like that, stuff that I will be using a lot. So, <laughs> I mean, as far as you get cars, I'm just like, you know, th there's always going to be time to that's always they're always gonna be around I mean you know with this crazy game now there's actually a couple of things I want to talk about involving this game and stuff like that and um I guess I'll talk about there's a couple of things I want to talk about um the first topic being why do I play lower tier decks like gusto and Madolce and who knows what else I've got playing and whatever I've been mainly playing those two and specific decks like Merma Atlanteans and Prophecy or something like that, but not stuff like, you know, Agents or Geargia or Machina or whatever the crap, the shit, whatever you call them now. There's like so many different variants. Geargia, Karakuri, Geargia, Machina, gadgets and gears and stuff. It's, I don't know. Like, I don't, I don't like them, but... I guess I could talk about that real quick. Why do I like Gusto and Madolce? Well, I guess I'll start with Madolce because it's the latest. Well, it's my recent deck that I'm building in in real life or whatever. I got most of the cards. I need. I just need to get like one more Madolce Queen Tiaramisu, and then yeah, I think I'm just about set. There might just be a couple other random shit that I can wait on because I just need to get like the main Xyz's and side deck stuff. I guess. I don't know. Whatever I can, whatever I have, I guess I can use too. So I'm one of those guys. But yeah, why do I play decks like Madolce when there are other better decks like Dino Rabbit and, you know, Agents and Mermaid Landings? Now, I play Mermaid Landings online, but not in real life. The decks I play, play in real life right now, well, it's mainly Madolce because I'm giving, I've given my Gusto deck a break because I'm waiting. Well, I'm kind of waiting for stuff. I'm waiting for Hidden Arsenal 7 to come out because there is one more Gusto monster that I need to get for it. I know it's like I could get the I could probably get the dual terminal version of the Gusto monster on eBay, but you know, I'm a bit shaky about eBay. Like I'm really shaky and sketchy about eBay and stuff like that. But you know, it's whatever. But yeah, like for Gustos, I feel like it's one of those decks that you have to like you can't screw up once. Like, it's not, I mean, you may think it may be kind of linear, and it kind of, well, it's only linear in if you're playing a specific variant of the deck. I feel like when you're going for the whole Digustus Freeze OTK, like if your entire deck is built around OTK with Digustus Freeze effect or whatever, then I'd say that is linear. That is all you're going to go for. I feel like going for one thing only, unless you're playing certain decks, it doesn't work. I feel like it doesn't work for me at least. I mean, it may work for others, but it won't work for me because I just have the worst luck sometimes. Because you know, I either draw really bad, like here, like in the beginning of this duel, I drew like no Madolce monsters. I drew like all back rows and spells and stuff like that. Stuff that would have been great if I had a Madolce monster. I would have gotten much full control. But you know, with decks like Gusto and Madolce, like they take time. Unless you want to play. I mean, you can play both decks incredibly fast, but I feel like decks like Gusto are naturally a defensive archetype. 
I mean, what ma what's gonna make them fast is what else you put, like, what else you add to them, you know what I mean? You know, like, if you add, uh, like, if you play, like, a Dragoonity variant or something, I mean, when Gusto Griffin comes out and that's the card I'm waiting for, then, yeah, I think that's gonna be pretty cool, but I'm mainly gonna be, I'm mainly gonna be wanting Gusto Griffin because there was some, I, j I actually had recently thought about some cool ideas using him in my Psychic Gusto deck and some cool plays that I could do that while they're not overly explosive like wind-ups or Mermo Atlanteans, they're just as cool, if not more worthwhile, you know what I mean? Because certain, con I feel like winning with decks like Gusto's like, it's a it's a hard deck to win with sometimes, especially when you're playing against like Macro Rabbit because they just have a Macro or D-Fissure and then you're kind of screwed, unless you can get rid of it relatively fast. But yeah, it's just like, I feel like decks like those I have more fun with because I have, I'm putting in more work to like thinking out my plays and trying to think, well, do I want to go for this play or go for that play? With certain decks, they're really linear. You got to do, you do this or bust. Certain, like, you know, I know some people talk about, well, a couple people talk about how Junk Doppel, all they do is go for shooting Quasar, Dragon, or bust. Now... I don't believe that Junk Doppel is all about Quasar. I mean, there are people who do that, but I feel like a deck with a lot of Synchro Monsters can grind out using various Synchro Monsters. Using like Junk Gardener, Junk, you know, Junk Destroyer, you know, the blow up cards. I mean, you don't have to, I mean, I feel like you don't always have to go for like first round Quasar. I mean, I mean, I, I feel the same about Lavals. I mean, I faced a few Laval decks that had me on the rose because they didn't, they didn't try to go all in and make Quasar, but they try to maintain field presence using cards like Laval Stenin and Librarian and stuff like that. Just Especially when I'm playing Gustos because my deck is mainly about Synchro Summoning, not XC Summoning. And, you know, stuff like that just kind of screws me up sometimes. But, I don't know, like, decks like Laval's, they can do a lot of stuff, but I've seen them do one thing only. Maybe it's just a minor nitpick. You know, I mean, they do, like, one thing, and they could do a bunch of other things, but... No, I'm getting way off traffic there. But off topic, not traffic. Ha! Yeah, I could kind of consider this meta like traffic. There's so much, so much um, stuff going on and stuff like that, and you know, things getting in the way and whatever. Now, for decks like Mermel Atlantis, why do I like them over something else like Dino Rabbit, which, you know, gives it a hard time when they got Macrocosmos up? Well, the thing is with Mermaid Landings is that I like the idea and the fact that I can tag cards and still do fine. You know, th th now, what I mean is taking cards that can work. I'm not talking about running random level 3 waters that don't do anything. I mean, even like Neospatial and Aqua Dolphin can technically do something because he triggers the effect of the Mermaid Landings or Mermaid Abyssgoon. She is awesome, by the way, Abyssgoon. Yeah, she's the freaking half woman half clownfish creature that when you discard her to the graveyard you bring back a mermaid monster you can bring back any that you want any of them and i've actually made some pretty cool plays where i can otk because i've used her effect when i go for the abyss megalo plays and she's another level three water monster you can search for in case you in case you're playing against a deck that don't really set that many cards then, you know, that's a level 3 monster you can go for. And, I mean, just being able to summon off Abyss Sturge or Abyss Spike from the deck with Abyss Lind is pretty good. And then being able to toss Abyss Goon to the graveyard, search for a level 3 water monster, and then bring back Abyss Lind to use her effect again next turn. I think that's pretty damn legit. But, you know, I don't know. I mean, it's not... Abyss Goon is not a standard choice in Mermaid Lanes and... Rightfully so, probably because Genix Undyne's a card. Now, I don't particularly like Genix Undyne because, well, not because the card sucks. I mean, I think the effect's awesome. Like, just being able to pitch a water monster to the graveyard, activate their effects, and getting a card to your hand from the deck, or potentially two if you pitch Dragoons, it's broken. It's really broken. That's like... Like, you basically win if you do that, because you, you get all the pieces together that you need to win the game. And I don't know, I, I feel like I don't like the idea of running cards like Gen X Controller when you have to run Gen X Controller. Yeah, there's Allure Darkness and stuff like that where you can just get rid of them, but... I mean, do I really... 
I mean, I'm not gonna be building them in real life, so why mimic what everyone else is doing card for card? I mean, I can run a few different cards. I can run Abyss Soldier, Abyss Gund. I can run like a few different cards. And I run stuff like Kapuls, which I think Kapuls is really good. Especially when they go bottomless, you can bounce your monster back and you can still get their effects and keep your monster safe. And if it's in the case of Abyss Megalo, you can potentially re-summon them again. Like when you pitch two water monsters to summon them and they go bottomless, you can Kapuls, summon them again. And if you're using something like Abyss Gooned as the cost to discard to summon them, you get back another Mermail monster. And if you just happen to have another Abyss Megalo because they haven't solemn warning it or something like that, you'll have two on the field. And you get to search. So that's pretty good. I like that. I like I like other options. And I just like Abyss Goon in general. I'm almost like in love. But that's a whole nother discussion. Now, as far as like what I want to talk about next, I guess this is kind of an obvious one because, you know, people have been playing this stuff, including myself. Well, mainly one archetype over the other. Well, I play the other one, but I play one more often because I love the idea. Uh, Phantom Beast Planes or Crafts or whatever and Harpy Ladies. Now, what do I think about these two archetypes? Now, I'm going to start with Harpy Lady because it's the older archetype that, you know, most people who play the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! are familiar with. And one of the latest, well, the set that comes after Cosmo Blazer, which we're getting pretty soon in the TCG, uh, Lord of the Tachyon Galaxy, there has been new Harpy Lady stuff. New support for Harpies. So, I mean, that's kind of cool. I mean, I wasn't expecting that, but yeah, they did. There was a couple that have been revealed at this time. I don't know if there's going to be more or not. We have a uh, Harpy Channeler. She kind of is like a summoner monk. You discard a Harpy card except Harpy's brother. To summon out another Harpy monster from your deck, excluding Harpy's brother or Harpy Channeler. So you can get you can even get Harpy's brother from not Harpy's brother, Harpy's pet dragon from your deck. Yeah, that level seven one. And Harpy Channeler becomes level seven when you have a dragon out. So you can go for a rank seven monster. You can go for you can go for Big Eye, Guy Dragon, or even a, a new rank seven for a particular archetype, which I will talk about next, which is the Phantom Beast Flames. And then you have Hysteric Sign. You can add Elegant Egotist to your hand. And when it gets destroyed, at the end phase, you can search three different Harpy cards. That's like a crazy plus. And, you know, with Harpy's Hunting Ground, you can pop it yourself with the field's effect and search. So that's pretty nice. And, yeah, like, what do I think about it? Do I think they're overhyped? Yes, because we don't know everything yet. We only know those. I mean, I'm pretty sure people have made... Well, I've seen a couple of decks. I think they're pretty interesting. But I don't know if, like, Harpies will be Tier 1 just because of the new stuff that's been revealed so far. Oh, and they got an Xyz, by the way. It's like Harpy's Pet Mirage Dragon, which I'm not going to really talk about because, I mean, I'll probably just put it in the description or something. But it's like, you know, you can attack directly. You have to detach a material at the end phase, and then, like, your Harpies cannot be attacked or targeted by card effects. That's about it. But it takes three level 4 wins, so... I think, I think it's either Wind or Winged Beast. It takes three of them, though. So it's quite hefty, but it's possible, especially when you run cards like Summoner Monk and Harpy Channel. But, yeah, the other archetype, Phantom Beast Crafts or Beast Planes or whatever they are. On DN, it's Beast Crafts. On Yu-Gi-Oh! Week here or anywhere else, it's like Phantom Beast Planes. Now, what do I think about them? I think that I like, I love the idea of the archetype. They're based around summoning Phantom Beast um, tokens or Phantom Beast playing tokens or whatever and the tokens are used to power up the phantom beast crafts themselves like one is a this one's like a stratos it's like a 1900 stratos like you sacrifice a token any token so you can use like gores tokens you can use scapegoat tokens you can use a fire of Do fires of doomsday tokens you can use tokens that your other phantom beast planes generate so yeah, that's pretty cool. You get to search for one, and then when you summon a token to your side of the field, you get to summon another token. So it's like, yeah, it's all about summoning tokens. And you got one that can power himself up during the damage step. You got one, two, that when flipped up adds two more tokens to your side of the field. And then you contribute one to bring a, a Phantom Beast playing monster back. And then you got one that blows up spells and traps. And then they all have different ways of generating tokens by either doing damage... Um, on being summoned, attacking, 
or just when a token's being summoned in general, like you get two, like you some, like if you get one token out with a monster, you get another one with uh, a Phantom Beast Plane token, so with another Phantom Beast Plane monster. So I like it, and their exceeds is pretty crazy. If you get him out, I I would say he's pretty broken, mainly because like. All the Phantom Beast Plane monsters, including the Exceeds monster, they can't be destroyed by battle or card effects while you have a token. And when you're generating a lot of tokens, it's going to be annoying to take them down because you have to take out the tokens force first or use mass removal, then attack them. But the thing is, when you have cards in the ar archetype that generate tokens also, like uh, Aerial Charge, that's pretty annoying, especially when you have Phantom Beast Craft Mega Raptor He's pretty much the searcher dude that I was talking about, but when you summon a token, he summons a Phantom Beast Plane token. And with Aerial Charge, you can generate a token once per turn, but you, at the end of each player's turn, you have to get, you, you either have to tribute a Phantom Beast Plane monster or send it to the graveyard. So it's, it's like a whole maintenance cost bullshit, but that's fair because you know how broken it would be if you didn't have to do that? You're pretty broken. But yeah, I think they're pretty cool. Do I think they're gonna be tier one? I don't know. I don't. We don't know for sure yet. We'll have to find out when one more stuff gets revealed for Harvey Ladies, if any. The Wind Elemental Lord and what it's gonna do, because you know there's been like an Elemental Lord in all these sets so far. The Return of the Duels, Abyss Rising, Cosmic Blazer, and then presumably Lord of the Tachyon Galaxy, because there's you know a wind a wind archetype. There's a Wind Elemental Lord and a Wind Knight, dude. So it's like. There's a lot of stuff to talk about, and I guess that could be for another video. Like, you know, I guess, like, my next DN video will be either, like, Phantom Beast Crash or the Harpy Ladies. I guess, um, yeah, whichever one I feel like putting up or something like that, and... Yeah, <laughs> I know it's kind of weird talking about this on freaking New Year's, but... It was on my mind at the time. I mean, you can't blame a guy for having that on the mind, right? But... Yeah, so next video is going to be a Pokemon Pokemon video. I think I'm probably going to do Showdown. Yeah, I did say I was going to do Showdown. I don't know how many I'm going to do. I feel like Pokemon Online might be more catering to me personally, but we'll see. But for now, this is Lee Speed signing out. Peace.